they decided that the time had come to punish the wicked prince and his family. A few days later, after Efe's father had made his plea, strange things began to happen in the village. Vengeance of the gods. In the small and quiet village of Abu lived a young maiden named Efe. Efe was known for her beauty. With her bright eyes and charming look, she lived with her father in a small, simple hut on the edge of the village. Though they were poor, they were content, finding joy in each other's company. One day, while Efe was fetching water from the village stream, she encountered Prince Ogene. Prince Ogene was the son of the king and lived in a grand palace at the heart of the village. He was tall, handsome, and admired by many. When Prince Ogene saw Efe, he was struck by her beauty. He approached her with sweet words and flattery, telling her that she was the most beautiful woman he had ever seen. Efe, being a simple village girl, was overwhelmed by the attention of the prince. She believed his words and soon found herself falling in love with him. Prince Ogene continued to charm Efe, making her believe he loved her and that they would one day be together. Efe was so deeply in love that she was willing to do anything for him. Months passed and Efe's love for Prince Ogene grew stronger. She believed that he was her true love, the man she was destined to be with forever. But Prince Ogene was not as sincere as he pretended to be. He had already planned to marry a beautiful princess from the wealthy village of Wama. This marriage would bring great riches to his family, and that was all he cared about. One day, if he discovered that she was expecting a child, overjoyed, she ran to the prince to tell him the news, thinking he would be happy and that they would start a family together. But when she told the prince, his reaction was not what she was expecting. Instead of joy, Prince Ogenet's face turned dark with anger. How dare you tell me this? You must get rid of this child at once. I cannot let this ruin my future. Efe was shocked and heartbroken. She could not believe that the man she loved so much could be so heartless. She begged him to change his mind. But the prince wouldn't listen. Terrified, Efe went home and told her father everything that happened. Mazin Duka, though poor, but was a wise and brave man who loved his daughter very well. When he heard how the prince had treated her, he was furious. I will go to the palace and demand justice. No one has the right to treat you this way, he said. The next day, Efe's father went to the palace. Though he was stopped by the palace guard, but he was determined to see the prince. He demanded to see Prince Ogene and kept on shouting, but the guards couldn't let him. Instead, they beat him and sent him out of the palace. As time passed, Efe's belly grew and it became clear to everyone that she was with a child. Despite Prince Ogene's threats, she could not bring herself to harm the innocent life growing inside her. She was determined to protect her baby, even if it meant facing the prince's wrath. When Prince Ogene realized that Efe had not followed his orders, he became furious. He knew that if the villagers found out about the child, his plans to marry the princess from Uwama would be ruined. 
he decided that he would have to get rid of Efe once and for all. One day, he sent a message to Efe asking her to meet him in the forest outside the village. He told her that he had changed his mind and wanted to talk about their future together. Efe, still hoping that the prince loved her, agreed to meet him up. When she arrived at the meeting place, Prince Ogene treated her with kindness and offered a drink for her. He told her it was a special portion that would help her relax and prepare for the birth of their child. Trusting him, if he drank the portion. Soon after drinking it, if he felt a sharp pain in her belly, she realized too late that she had been poisoned. She fell to the ground, her strength fading. As she lay there, she looked up at Prince Ogede, who stood over her with a cold, cruel expression. You should have listened to me, Prince Ogede said. Her last thoughts were of her father and the child she would never meet. With her dying breath, she prayed to the gods, asking them to protect her father and avenge her death. When Efe did not return home. Her father grew worried. He searched the whole village and surrounding forest, calling out her name, but there was no sign of her. Days passed and still there was no word from Efe. Finally, one of the villagers found her lifeless body in the forest. Efe's father was overcome with grief. His only daughter, the light of his life, was gone. He knew in his heart that Prince Ogene was responsible for her death, but he felt powerless to bring the prince to justice. In his sorrow, Efe's father went to the sacred shrine of the gods. He knelt before them and cried for help. O oh, great gods of Abu, hear my plea. My daughter has been taken from me by the evil prince. He has wronged us and shown us no mercy. I ask you, mighty gods, to bring justice to those who have caused us this pain. Let the vengeance of the gods fall upon the royal family so that they may know the suffering that they've cost me, he cried. The gods heard the old man's cry and they were moved by his sorrows. They decided that the time had come to punish the wicked prince and his family. A few days later, after Efe's father had made his plea, strange things began to happen in the village. The sky grew dark and the powerful wind began to blow. The villagers could feel that something was not right and they were left in fear. The wind grew stronger and stronger around the palace with a force that shook the walls. The trees bent and snapped and the animals fled in terror. Then, without warning, a great silence fell over the land and the villagers held their breath, waiting for what would happen next. Suddenly, a deafening roar filled the air and the ground trembled beneath their feet. The palace doors flew open and a cold icy wind swept through the halls, one by one. Every living thing in the palace fell to the ground, dead. The royal family, the servants, the guards, all of them were struck by the wrath of the gods. When the villagers heard what had happened, they rushed to the palace. What they found shocked them to their core. The once grand palace was now a place of death 
filled with lifeless bodies of those who had once lived there. As they looked at the fallen prince, they knew that the gods had heard and answered the old man's prayer. Justice had been saved and the wicked prince had paid the price for his evil deed. News of the gods' vengeance spread through the kingdom. The villagers of Abu spoke of it and the stories was passed from generation to generation. It became a powerful lesson, a reminder that no one is above the laws of the gods. Efe's father, though still mourning the loss of his daughter, found some comfort in knowing that justice had been done. He knew that the gods had heard his plea and had avenged the daughter in a way that he never could have. From that day on, the people of Abu learned to live with respect and kindness. They knew that the gods were always watching and that those who commit evil would one day face the consequences of their action. Do you know that Amadioa is a powerful god of thunder and lightning? worshipped by the Igbo people in southeastern Nigeria. He is one of the most well-known gods in Igbo culture. In some places, people also call him Amadiora. Amadiora is the ruler of the skies with great power and makes his followers respect him and his enemies fear him. His friend is Ayao, the god of sun. Thanks for watching. Love from the classic stories.